Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And today's video, we're going to be looking at the updated and newest line of isolated pedal power supplies from K Line Technologies. So, for full disclosure, K Line did send me these pedal power supplies free of charge in exchange for a review and also a summary of the of how these pedal power supplies work. I actually have some pretty extensive videos on teardowns of the previous versions of these particular models, the 205, the 206, and the 207. What you're seeing here is just mostly cosmetics, really. And the only thing that they removed is the top side USB ports that you would have found on some of the previous versions of these pedal power supplies. That's really the only difference. They have employed the resistor change that I had discovered last year. It was causing some output issues that have long since been corrected. So I'm happy to say that I have a small part in getting these debugged. But I wanted to discuss a little bit on the isolated section of how these power supplies work. And if anyone is interested, yes, these are true isolation power supplies. So you won't get any kind of ground loops. Uh, that is very important when you're powering your pedal board with various pedals and you don't want any kind of stray noise or ground loops to be created. These pedal power supplies will solve that problem for you. A quick unboxing, you will get the instruction manual for all three of these power supplies. You will get the power bricks themselves. You will get the wall adapter for the country that you're in. And depending on how many outputs, you will get the wire adapters that go from the output stage going to your pedals. The 206 has 12, the 205 has 8, and the 207 has 10 outputs. The only difference with the 205 is that you get 9 volts output only with varying amperage, so 300 milliamps all the way up to 500 milliamps. The 206 will expand it the furthest with 12 outputs total, and you get a 12 volt and an 18 volt output here on the end. You'll get a couple high current ones at 9 volts. And then over here at the 207, it's kind of a mix of the 206 and 205. So you get 10 outputs and you get 300 milliamps, 100, and then a high current at 9 volts. And then there are 12 and 18 volts for the pedals that need that. So the preferred method is to have isolation from your incoming power to the power that's going out to your pedals. And the reason why is because you would typically have something more traditional like this. This is a daisy chain pedal power supply where it just has a brick that takes your wall power and brings it down to nine volts. And then you have the daisy chain where you have this wire that has multiple power ports that go to your pedals. And now all your pedals are connected together using the same power supply. And that's where you can potentially get noise. And here's an example of what that noise is. Here's a simple example of what I'm referring to with what an inferior pedal power supply with a daisy chain will do to your sound. Here we have the amplifier and we have uh, an effects pedal. It's a chorus and delay modulation effect. It's connected to my guitar here and it goes right into the input. Now what I would do, and we have the, just the volume up a little bit, we're going to connect the daisy chain to the brick here. What you're hearing is a ground loop. That's because your amp is grounded, so is the power brick through the neutral, and this is now causing a circulating current to cause that noise to come through. And it doesn't matter if it's on or off, this is the problem that you would get with your typical daisy chain. And if you added more pedals to the daisy chain, this noise would get far worse. However, if we break that loop, then the noise goes away. And now you could power with batteries and you can get rid of that sound, but batteries don't last forever. So you don't want that to fail during a gig. So you need a power supply. Let's check out one of these K-Line power supplies. So here we have the CP206. I just chose that arbitrarily, but all these power supplies are essentially the same thing. And they are taking the wall power incoming. They're bringing it in. They're going to convert it from DC over to AC, run that AC voltage through a transformer. That'll get you your isolation. It'll then be filtered and regulated down to these output stages on its own separate winding from that transformer. So each of these outputs are their own power stage. So if you short one of them out, the other ones are still going to work just fine. And what I have here is now the wire. I'm just using the daisy chain as a wire here to connect to the pedal shouldn't be a problem and now if we connect it over here
Power's on. And it's working just fine. No noise. That is what you get with an isolated pedal power supply. All right, guys, I'm going to end the video here. Wanted to keep it as brief as possible to give you a quick overview of what these power supplies have as far as features. If there's any questions that you might have, please feel free to reach out with a comment below. Also, I'll link down below to K-Line Technologies contact information. You can reach them by email or they do have a phone number if you'd like to get a hold of them that way. But I found that uh, based in North America where I am, that it's always best to either reach out via email or via a Facebook Messenger. They uh, do have someone that is constantly monitoring that inbox. So if you do have a question, you can reach out to them for any particular questions. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel. And we'll catch you on the next video.